Hi, everyone. Welcome to Conversations with Nicole. Today, my guest is Dr. Leslie Kirby, a licensed doctor of audiology and owner of Lifetime Hearing Services. Dr. Kirby has served the PD region of South Carolina for more than three decades. Lifetime Hearing Services is the only private practice audiology center in the PD with three full service locations. She has a passion for caring for individuals who have hearing issues. She works hard to take care of her patients and she actively gives back to the community. I've seen it all firsthand because Dr. Kirby is a lifelong friend just about. It's good to see you. Thanks for being my guest. Thank you too, Nikki. I tell you, we go way back and I was a fresh audiologist and in Florence here, and you came to do an interview with me, and you brought that big old camera on your shoulder, <laughs> and you were the one man show. And that gosh, that was over three decades ago. So uh, yeah, kids, kids are the same age, everything. So we've shared a lot over the years. So it's really exciting that you are my guest today for conversations with Nicole. And I gave a little bit of a description of your practice, but tell folks more details about what you do and services offered. Oh, goodness. Gosh, we love what we do. So I opened up Lifetime Hearing Services in the year 2000. Uh, Prior to that, I worked as the director of audiology for four ear, nose, and throat physicians here in Florence. And then I branched off into my own private practice and um, haven't looked back. So we have had an incredible, incredible time. In fact, we did a little research the other day, and Lifetime Hearing Services has now evaluated over 50,000 ears. Wow. So we have been busy. We've been real busy. Yeah, God has blessed us. He continues to bless us, and we love doing for the community um, and giving back as much as we possibly can. But We perform audiological hearing evaluations on, I start with children as old as five years old, all the way up through our elderly population. We are the only dispenser of Belltone brand hearing instruments within several, several counties. And I am also the only regional cochlear implant center. So I do cochlear implant evaluations and I work with a surgeon out of Columbia who actually performs the surgeries and then I activate and program cochlear implants. So we have a very busy practice, uh, three locations, Florence, Hartsville and Camden. And I have a wonderful team that just loves what we do and how we can help people communicate um, in our region. And you are staying top on technology as well. There's always something new coming out in your industry. Talk about the latest technology for hearing aids and implants. Well, let's even talk about something else that we do that nobody else in South Carolina does right now. And that is taking three-dimensional computerized scans of people's ears so that we can have customized ear molds made and receivers made that fit their ear like a glove because it's a computerized scan. And we are the very first office in South Carolina to be certified in that process. So we're really excited about bringing that kind of technology to the PD region. And Belltone has their newest hearing instrument out called the Belltone Achieve, which is phenomenal. Our patients are loving the way that it is helping them, especially in noise. Research is showing us that this particular hearing instrument improves speech understanding and noise by 150%. So for those that struggle in noise, we definitely have incredible medical grade prescriptive hearing devices to be able to help everybody live and love the life that they have. I hear that a lot. Some folks will say the hearing aid makes everything so loud and the noise. And we want people to know there are options and you're providing those. Yeah, we provide every single option that is imaginable, even over the counter hearing devices. um, My office actually does have an incredible option for that called the Jabra Enhanced Plus. Um, So that kind of marries the two where you get a little professional advice with an over-the-counter device instead of just trying to go to, you know, Walgreens or CVS and picking something off the shelf. So that leads me into my next question. Hearing aids were recently uh, passed FDA guidelines and related to the -the over-the-counter hearing aids. Talk about why it's 
important for us to know information about these hearing aids as opposed to what you offer? There is a difference. There is definitely a difference. I love that there are now over-the-counter hearing devices. I love that. I love that people are now feeling that they can take control and they can maybe go in and start and see if they can help themselves. They are designed for particular hearing losses. So I would stick with more of the milder hearing losses for the -the over-the-counter devices where you may not necessarily need a prescriptive medical grade device but you need a little bit of help. So you're noticing a little bit of trouble with clarity. You're noticing that you're probably not hearing as well at a distance as you once were able to. You know, you go into a restaurant and you're having a little bit of difficulty with background noise. That is a perfect opportunity to start looking into something over the counter. But anybody that has more of a significant type of a hearing loss, I would say moderate, on up to our severe and profound hearing loss um, patients, we really need to start looking into something that's more medical grade and something that is prescriptive for your actual hearing loss. So I do think that there is definitely a niche market for over-the-counter devices. I love it. Um, But we also need to make sure that we're aware of who they are designed for and what the limitations may be with them. Absolutely. And you said everyone has variations in hearing loss and the reasons why, whether it's the ringing in your ear or like you said, distance or noise. And really, that's where the value comes in and coming to you for you to actually diagnose, look at the patient and figure out exactly what you need. Right? Absolutely. So one of the things, one of the many things that we do in our practice is we love to take time and educate our patients on the health of their ear. So we have a video otoscope where the patient can actually see visually the inside of their ear. We can see if there's any obstruction, if there's any wax that's causing the problem, if their ear is um, draining or, or having an infection. We can analyze and we can take a look at all of that and get them the, the help that they need for that. Education is so important to be able to know what exactly is going on. Why am I having the trouble and noise? Um, What has been possibly causing this? Getting all of that professional information. uh, Knowledge is power. And if you understand everything that's going on, it just makes everything so much easier. So we really pride ourselves. To give you an idea, Nikki, um, An initial evaluation for somebody that's coming in saying that they have a hearing loss is an hour and a half with us. Okay. So that is kind of unheard of these days in medical. To actually take time? (laughs) Yes, we take time. We want to learn about our our patients become family members in our practice. So we want to make sure that they have all the information that they need, that we understand um, the difficulties that they're having. And then when we do the evaluation, go over those test results in detail with them, and then give them some choices that they have to be able to help themselves. I, I, as people are, are watching and listening right now, I know that they see the passion that you have for helping yeah. people and their hearing health. I, I know I've witnessed it from the day that I met you and I thought, wow, she's really into this and she really cares. And that's what you want yeah. from a physician who's looking to take care of you. And in right. fact, Especially when it comes to hearing everything, I I find that I hear people say sometimes they kind of avoid wanting to come in and, and get things checked out. They rather just kind of work their way around it. That's not a good option. Come in and figure it out, right? Well, it amazes me to, to no end how everybody will go to get their vision checked, right? right. Everybody has been to an optometrist, an optician. Ophthalmologist, but so few of those same people have gotten a baseline hearing evaluation. And what the Journal of American Medicine recommend recommends is that by age 50, everybody should have a baseline, even if everything is okay. Just make sure that everything is on record so that down the road, if things do shift or change, 
We know where that's occurring, how quickly it's occurring, so that we can get on top of it and be be provide treatment if we need to. Yeah. So yeah, you know, hearing and vision just work seamlessly together. God is incredible with how he puts our bodies together. We just need to maintain it. <laughs> That's a good point. And I have to admit, and I will admit this right now, I feel like I have some hearing issues from my line of work. For all those years, we had what's called an IFB and we put it in our ear. And so someone's constantly was in our ear, probably sometimes louder than normal, but that constant noise going into your ear, I I do feel like I have suffered some, some hearing loss. And I'm 56, so I'm overdue from what you just said to come in and actually have Guess what? You're going to take a trip into my office, and we're going to visit and do a hearing test, and I'll even take you out to lunch. Okay. It's a date. But, you know, I didn't really think about having a baseline yeah. at a certain age. 50 makes sense, and that way you you monitor it. I mean, I know when my eyes are going bad, and I right. um, you know, already have some of these that I, that I use. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, and well, and I had cataract surgery last oh, last year. So yeah, I mean, we just we just have to stay on top of things. But um, when it comes to our hearing, it is so very important. Number one, there is no pain involved with hearing loss, and that's why a lot of people can put it on the back burner and not get it evaluated, and they will cope with it, and they'll turn up the volume on their TV and drive their spouse that's out of the house. Um, because there's no pain involved, right? When we typically go to a doctor, we want to get out of pain, you know, relieve me of this, but it doesn't hurt. There's no pain. So people do have a tendency to put it off. What we do know through many research studies, though, is that the longer that a hearing loss goes untreated, the more at risk that person can become for developing dementia and Alzheimer's, and a lot of other cognitive issues. So hearing occurs in the brain. Mm -hmm. And if there is a problem in the hearing, that means that we need to correct as best as we can what's pro being processed up in the brain. So yeah, it is real important. Like I said, the Journal of American Medicine recommends two things at age 50, a colonoscopy and a hearing evaluation. And I tell everyone, come see us first. <laughs> You're a lot less pleasant than the colonoscopy. <laughs> if I would remember anything about this interview, I'll remember that, right? <laughs> we, do. we do have a passion for what we do. We love to be able to help people and help families because hearing loss does not just affect one person. It affects everybody that tries to have a conversation with that person. So I always tell my patients, you know, my profession is twofold. I'm a doctor of audiology, number one. Secondly, I'm a marriage counselor. <laughs> there is a fine line between the two of those oftentimes. So the two for when you come to your office. <laughs> right. Two services met, therapy and, and hearing loss. I love it. Listen, what's the best way for folks to learn more about, about your, your office and what you're yeah. doing? So we have a great website. It is um, lifetimehearingservices.com. You can definitely find us on Facebook. We love to be active with social media. So we have a great Facebook page. Um, and our office in Florence, that is our hub office. That's our main office. We're conveniently located right on Palmetto Street, just a couple of blocks away from Sex and Dental Clinic. But our phone number is 843-662. Four, three, two, seven. Well, as we close, any final thoughts? No, I just love, you know, it's amazing how technology changes yeah. over time. Uh, when I was a graduate school student at Syracuse University, the way that we adjusted hearing aids is we literally wore a tool belt around our waist that had all these little tiny screwdrivers. Mm -hmm. And when somebody needed an adjustment, we take the hearing aid off their ear. It was a big hearing aid open up the back of it with a screwdriver and manually have to adjust some pods that were in on the hearing aid. Now everything is completely digital. We connect up to the computer wirelessly. We're able to make incremental little changes. 
Hearing aids are now cell phone compatible so that we can stream through their um, their telephones and take phone calls and use their phone as a remote control. It's just amazing over the three plus decades how technology has improved tremendously to help the hearing impaired population. So no reason to put it off, no reason to be scared. Um, just come in as family and we'll take good care of you. Sounds perfect. Dr. Kirby, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Nicole. And that will I'll do see it you soon in the office. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you, yeah, I've said it out loud, so I've got to get there. <laughs> You're on record now. I'm on record. Oh, gosh, this has been a lot of fun. I really oh. appreciate you. All right. I appreciate you, too. We go way back. Indeed, we do. And Indeed. you don't age a bit, and I hate it. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. All right. That's going to do it for this edition of Conversations with Nicole. Until I see you again, I hope you have a great day.